Hello, lovely Libra. Okay, it's your turn. What do we need to know for Libra? Sun, moon, rising, Venus. Thank you for all your comments in the last reading when I asked you whether Librans were particularly tidy because I'd just met a Libran and she was so beautifully tidy that I just had a hunch. So I put it out there to you and I would say roughly 90% response was yes, if not 95. If not 99, it was just like um, tidy to the point of OCD to the scale of tidy, but everybody was tidy. So that's really interesting. If you have any more thoughts on that and Libra and tidiness, do let me know. I'm going to take a couple of overall energy cards. Oh my God, those are exciting. I'm using the Lightseer's Tarot, which I always find exciting. You get, first of all, the Knight of Cups, which is a very nice card to get. This is, I mean, talking about doing something bang tidy, okay? This is someone who turns up with a quite nice outfit on there, I think, um, taking their hat off. You know, there's a certain sense of propriety about this that I rather like. And there's some lovely flowers. They're not garage flowers. They're not, you know, chrysanthemums that smell a little bit like cat wee or some weird hedge. They're a nicely put together bouquet. They've got a letter with a wax seal. They've got a beautiful horse in the background that almost looks like a unicorn. They've got a picnic going on here with some wine that's on ice. I mean, come on, roll out the barrel. This is somebody good enough for you. No, it's just, let's just go for it. Good enough for you. Now, that card comes up. And of course, that normally represents Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, water sign people, or people who are very thoughtful, emotionally attuned. Then we get this baby. I mean, I love this card. This is the moon, major arcana. Okay, so these two together, the knight of cups with the moon. Something here about what is deeply felt and emotionally held, okay? So you may be finding yourself sort of in the middle of something a bit mysterious, but rather dreamy is what I'm getting. And I don't quite understand it, but I like it. And I love these two together. I love this sort of, and this is not tidy. This is sort of underwater, mermaidy. Let's take some more cards. I'm intrigued. I'm very intrigued. As it is the Knight of Cups, of course, it can be an offer. It can be somebody asking you out. It can be somebody upping their game because we start off with the Page of Cups, stumbling around with the smelly fish, you know, not really in control of themselves, but interested, you know, and we think, oh, that's nice. That's sweet. And then they go away and realize they got to bring it a little bit. And that's when you get the Knight of Cups. It's like, okay, I brought it. Here's the blanket, here's the horse, here's the picnic, here's me, we're all good. But the moon implies that there's more to it. And here it is. <laughs> this is it, okay. We have here the Two of Swords and the Five of Swords. Two of Swords, you can see, and this has come up a little, sorry, that's Five of Swords. This has come up a bit for all signs, this Two of Swords. There's a feeling of something not moving, not kind of having legs. You know how you have this feeling of mermaid and fish and being underwater and feeling sloshing around and a sense of sort of mystery and moon and water and all that stuff. But what we don't have yet is a feeling that this can get up out of the water and actually make it on dry land. What I am sensing here is something to do with a relationship and to do with a reality of a relationship and whether a relationship can move from feeling to fact is what I'm getting. I'm interested to see the Five of Swords. So you might be dealing with another air sign, um, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Five of Swords is when there's been moves in different directions. 
for example, you may have been intellectually bantering with somebody, a lot of text messages flying around, that kind of thing. And you don't know whether it's going to become something more solid. For some reason, the window is making a really awful noise, so apologies for that. I've got a really old house with rattly windows. The Five of Swords can also mean that there's a bit of a kind of a silent battle going on for something. Gosh, your cards are just like plopping out onto the floor. Hang on. Oh, love the hermit. Nice. Okay. We get the Three of Pentacles. And if there was ever a card that says, can we make it on dry land? It is the Three of Pentacles. There's always some people cooperating with each other, making something, building something, doing something. Are we on the same page? Can we make this work? Can we get this together? Can we make this happen? In terms of your career and life purpose, it might also be as well that being um, Librans, you're very creative and that you have a number of ideas in the air or things that you want to do or ambitions that are quite emotionally close to your heart. And you don't know, again, whether you can weave this into something that could be monetized or something that could have a structure. So when it comes to your work life, and many Librans have very beautiful homes, very good at interior design, um, any kind of sort of harmony based art things. So I'm just putting some hand cream on. It feels as if In your work life, you want to know whether you can move closer to something that's closer to your heart or do something or make something that can be tangible and touched and looked at and tasted and smelled. You know, that kind of, can I make what's in my head come out on the page, on the canvas, in the collection, whatever, you know, in, in my creative endeavours, whatever they may be. For those of you who may be in a job where you're paying the bills, but it's not lighting up your heart, it's not making you feel that you are being able to sort of express yourself, you may well start looking for something more meaningful, okay? While at the same time maintaining the balance that we've all got to pay the gas bill or whatever it is. Then you get two majors, rather nice as well. You get the hermit, and I particularly like this Hermit. I think it's really, really beautiful. So you get the Hermit card, Major Arcana, and you get the Empress card. Okay. Hermit and the Empress. There's a lot of Yin energy and there's a lot of Lunar energy pay attention to full moons, whether it's full moon eclipses, because we're in eclipse season, or whether it's full moon that comes every month, that is a good time for you to exercise it or make a move. Whether this is in a love relationship, and we'll have a look at your love life now at the bottom, or whether this is to do with your love relationship with an art form. That's the best way I can put it. Okay. Let's have a look at your love life. So I've also got this in mind, Knight of Cups and the Moon and this sort of swing feeling of being underwater. There will be an extended reading as there is every month with each star sign. What we do in that is the cards that come out here for your love life we take whatever has come up and we do an extended love reading and we get weird and we channel and we get out all the decks that I can't use on YouTube. So the link to that is the first line in the description box if you're after that, if this really resonates with you. More cups. Oh. Hello, who's this? <coughs> this chap. I don't know if I told you this, if you watch the dailies, do subscribe, by the way, if you want to get the dailies. Um, this chap, I came up so many times one month in my readings that my iPhone 
made him a profile picture of people you contact often and he popped up like as a person on my phone <laughs> I was like I don't know if that's like really cool or really really sad but anyway this is a bit more melancholic so we've got the five of cups coming in and the five of cups let me just lift this card up because I can't seem to get my camera to behave properly Five of Cups is a card of letting go of something emotionally, letting go of someone, making some kind of peace with the past, some kind of, some kind of goodbye almost, but not a very straightforward one. Then we have the devil underneath the moon. The devil, I'm going to take another card to go with it as well. The devil is very tempting and can be about toxic things, but it can also be about sort of human heat and, yeah, okay. We get the emperor for the devil. Oof, this is hot stuff. Okay, somebody has or is going to make it clear that they want you. And you can, you know, Think of that in the many different ways you can want a person because it's got to be PG here on YouTube. So somebody is not afraid to step up and claim here. They want you in some way. This could be some, because it's like almost if you look at this one, two, three, four here, okay? And this is very, very divine masculine, very yang, very I'm here, I'm here for this, I'm up front, I'm saying what I want. So this is inviting energy, this is yang energy. It's obviously very tempting energy, okay? This is tempting, this is exciting. It's quite carnal when you get the devil is what I'm trying to say. There is this feeling of physicality, carnality. And then the emperor, the emperor associated normally with Aries or the first sign of the zodiac because the emperor is somebody who is who knows what they want. It's like, I know what I want. I'm here for this. I want this. I want you. Interesting. The question for you that I'm getting, weirdly, is can we take this from the water to dry land? Can we? Because the water is the mermaid state, let's say. And that's the state of fantasy and feeling and no boundaries and the moon and lunar energy and the empress. And you are very much the divine feminine in this. And I've just noticed, and it's so amazing how many times I don't notice this. We've got the empress and we've got the emperor in the same reading. We've got the masculine energy and the feminine energy. Whenever these two show up together, I always miss it. And I don't know why, but I didn't. I've finally caught onto it. Okay. So you have masculine energy, you have the feminine energy. You are the sea and they are dry land, I think. Nice. Then we get your card, Justice. Justice is great because it's obviously, it's a card of balance. We've got the scales. You're able to balance the masculine and feminine energies. At some point here, this is going to be all about the masculine. So if it was about your career, let's say, it's all about the pursuit. It's all about finding something, um, targeting something, chasing this thing, getting it, goal oriented behavior, okay? But that in itself won't be enough. You will need the divine feminine, the creativity to be able to get others into it, to be able to transmit, to be able to express. In terms of your relationships, there's very much the pursuing here. We've got the Knight of Cups. We started off, you know, we started off pretty high on the scale, didn't we? Because the Knight of Cups has come in with um, 
the bottle of wine and and all the nice clothes and I'm laying out my blanket and I'm sort of he's setting his stall out which we appreciate and feminine energy is an appreciating energy it's where you glow and grow because you appreciate this masculine gesture or the fact that somebody has done this you know but they need to be balanced and we have the four of swords coming in here and I love the four of swords and this is about not all of this is to do with taking action a lot of the time and this has come up for other signs this month too and I've got the sun coming in hang on that's better there are times when you're going to be in the feminine and in receiving which you might not be used to beautiful then we get the chariot cancerian card of the chariot two horses going in different directions i would say again the interplay of masculine and feminine of light and shade i like this for you somehow in balancing the masculine and feminine energies of seek and pursuit you are managing to sort of weave in and out of something quite magic then we get the four of cups this is about keeping everything steady there is a real need here because there's there could be an awful lot of excitement or if this is about a relationship an awful lot of i mean come on chemistry um, it feels that way it feels hot it feels exciting you don't want this to lose control like with the chariot where there's two horses wanting to go in different directions and if you keep those two horses going you've got this beautiful tension between masculine and feminine it's sort of creating sparks as it goes if you go too far one horse or the other you're going to overturn you know you're going to overturn the chariot you're not going to get to your destination let me just take a couple more cards because when there's the devil card there and here it is we always have to wonder if there's something we need to know about because we've got the seven of swords interesting again whacking great full moon on that card and the seven of wands two sevens right this is the sort of side side of things you need to be wary about and this is whether this is in relationship, whether it's in career, whether it's in a relationship where you've just met somebody or something where you know each other better than that. I'm trying to get this to focus. It feels like there is some element of this which is still not known, still a bit hidden, interestingly. And the Seven of Wands is about, and this is for you, it was Taurus last year, it's you this year, this is about your boundaries, very, very dynamically expressing your boundaries in the choices that you make around this person or this decision. You are going to be offered something, something's coming in. This starts the ball rolling. It starts and I'm getting, I've had it a lot recently, I'm channeling that old office toy from like the 1980s with silver balls that are hanging off a thing and they go tick, 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 and they hit each other. But you only have to start it going with one movement and the rest kind of takes care of itself. And it's almost a bit like the scales as well. It just has this sort of way that gravity does it. So we have the seven of swords, the seven of wands. You're around all this sort of maelstrom and sea and moon and swirl and emotions. You need also to have your boundaries very, I don't like the word firmly, but as if they were electric fences, very beautiful electric fences. Think of the wands and all these different gorgeous colours as just beautiful, well decorated, very Libran electric fences so somebody just gets a gentle shock if they come up against something this is going to become important because there are aspects to this you don't quite know about and that's not to say that they're bad it's just to say they're not visible yet they're not obvious yet which is why you've got this moon card where things are sort of below the surface 
In the extended reading, I'm going to look at a lot of these cards. I'm going to take different decks and clarify the Devil, the Moon, the Knight of Cups, the Seven of Swords, the Emperor, the Empress, and look at this dynamic more closely and also look at the shadow side and what is buried, what is hidden, what is not known. That's the first link in the description box. Leave me a comment, let me know. Let me know if you're tidy as well. And I'll see you on the other side. Namaste.